Report writing. Training in air traffic control is organized in a way that the student's progress and final qualification are subject to monitoring and assessment. The majority of feedback is given verbally in a professional and well-meaning way. However, instructors and assessors may find it challenging to express their views on the capabilities and performance of students and ATCO colleagues in a written form. The aim of this video is to highlight the purpose of written reports and to provide some guidance for report writing. This video is a tool that can help you understand why it is mandatory, but also important and useful to focus on written feedback. Training documentation is a form of written assessment. Performance of a student is assessed and written down by the instructor and or assessor in the form of the report. Training documentation is also a means by which the training system may be evaluated. It provides the training system with a clear indication of the strengths and weaknesses. If certain challenges arise with the student's progress or with the training system itself, they must be identified and remedial actions should be taken accordingly. The primary reason for having training reports is to communicate to the students their development during the training. The instructor should make the student aware of their rate of progress. It is human nature that we want to know how well or not we perform and progress. Knowledge of results is fundamental to learning and it is defined as feedback of information to the students regarding the correctness of their performance and success or challenges in mastering training objectives. It describes a situation where the students get information which helps them to change behavior in a desirable way or to gain understanding. That is the reason why the students are very focused on the instructor's or assessor's feedback. Other reasons? Provide information to training personnel, instructors, assessors, training managers, etc. Feedback to the training system, rules and regulations. Here we'll explain. It's important to keep other instructors and assessors, when necessary, informed about the student's development. All instructors involved in the training of the student should have insight into the student's development, so they may decide on the training commitment, dynamics, and to set priorities and help the student to enhance performance. The instructors and assessors shall have the personal responsibility for non-disclosure of confidential information related to the student's training. Confidential information includes student progress, training results, as well as their attitudes and behavior. The training system also includes personnel responsible for developing, facilitating, and supervising training plans and programs. Their responsibility is to assess the training needs, implement training and development plans. Effective training is a business necessity. Feedback is an essential aspect of any learning system and it assures that the training process is maximized, both at the present and in the future. By analyzing individual student reports, comparing individual reports with each other and with those of previous groups of students, the training system has the ability to measure its own effectiveness, training objectives, and criteria. Feedback about the training system is the opportunity to change or redesign the training process, or to keep it as successful as it is. Last but not least are regulatory requirements. If you are wondering why all these regulations and requirements, well, it started over a decade ago under the safety management system. All personnel having operational safety related tasks must be adequately trained and competent for the job they are required to do. Safety and quality audits, whether they're internal or external, represent an independent examination of the training system and should take a broad view on how the safety and quality management procedures have been implemented and conducted. The reports are evidence that education has taken place and how it has progressed. On the subject of evidence, in a case of failure of an examination or assessment, or whenever the student feels mistreated, contrary to the rules, procedures, or ethos of the training organization, the student has the right to appeal. Consequently, training reports will most probably become evidence in the appeal process. As already mentioned, the performance and progress of students shall be closely monitored and assessed. Eurocontrol describes assessment as a process of gathering evidence regarding the student's performance to determine how they are progressing with their training and to identify any areas for improvement. This evidence is acquired by comparing students' performance with a fixed standard. 
Each unit training plan details the process for the conduct of a unit training and the processes for the assessment. Feedback on a regular basis given by an instructor is for the purpose of the student's development. These reports should contain the instructor's comments on the student's performance and most importantly include the instructor's feed forward on how to improve on certain elements discussed during the report. The fixed standards are training objectives laid down in the UTP, but also can be short-term objectives, known as focus areas, which instructor and student will agree upon before the training session. Remember, knowledge of result. Additionally, feedback to the students can be given as a result of a summative assessment, which represents a summary of the student's attitudes and abilities over a period of time. It should not be given by those responsible for coaching a particular student, but should be an independent appraisal by a qualified assessor. Feedback, whether given by instructor or assessor, may have an important and lasting influence on that person's abilities or attitudes, and should therefore, must be factual and content. In some units, students are encouraged to create their own development reports or action plans. Students are stimulated to self-analyze their own performance, reflect and find optimal solutions to possible difficulties they may encounter. Such reports should not be included in the student's official file and should only serve as a pedagogical development tool. Few tips when writing the reports. It is highly recommended to take notes during the session. After all, it is impossible to remember what happened at the beginning of the session. The notes must be clear, balanced, and factual so that the instructors and assessors can recall events and situations and discuss them with the student. The report should reflect what the debriefing contained. Write down strengths as well. Discuss them with the student in order to encourage an objective student self-assessment and to reinforce the desired behavior. If instructors and assessors note only weaknesses, the debriefing and the reports will be inundated with negative comments. So think about how to balance notes. And here are a few tips on how to achieve that. Observe the performance and reckon on Good training reports. Concentrate on facts and evidence and include recommendations for further training, which can be helpful to overcome possible weaknesses that a student might have and or to reinforce strengths. When writing the reports, instructors and assessors should avoid opinions and impressions and keep in mind that the reports are a pedagogical tool. Report writing can be time-consuming hard work, but it is also an important part of instructors' and assessors' responsibilities and the basis for any effective monitoring, evaluation, learning, and sharing within the training system. Make sure it is useful for everybody – students, instructors, but also inspectors and auditors. Take your time. Develop your own effective and constructive report writing structure. Luckily, there are many helpful tips and tricks. 1. First, get to know your audience. Consider to whom you address the report. Second person versus third person. You possess an extensive vocabulary and adhere to standard RTF during transmissions with pilots and phone coordination at all times. Writing in the second person flows better for the reader if the text is directed toward the reader. This can be very useful when writing the recommendations for the student. Feed forward by an instructor. The student possesses an extensive vocabulary and adheres to standard RTF during transmissions with pilots and phone coordination at all times. Writing in the third person displays the distance between the writer and the event. This type of addressing makes it easier for instructors and assessors to express the observed behavior and in that way maintaining factual accuracy and ob objectivity of the report. The four C's provide a checklist for making sure that the reports are well constructed and clear. We want the reader to get the message. The reports need to be correct, clear, concise, complete. Try to avoid abstract descriptors such as Rather use concrete descriptors. Too late is an opinion, but three minutes is a fact. And even when the report is complete, if we didn't follow a systemic approach, we can never be sure that we captured the real picture. 
Training and assessment reports are a basis for effective decision making, and poor quality reports lead to poor quality decisions that affect training success and can even misinform. A key part of reporting is capturing lessons learned, learning what went right and what went wrong, how to build on success, and how to avoid the mistakes of the past. In order to ensure that the training and the student have met all objectives of the unit training plan, the reports should include unit and traffic descriptors. For correct information, check your local training documentation. Here are some examples of what might be included. The student must be familiar with the content of the reports. This is acknowledged by student signature or by other means. Example, tick in a box. A student's acknowledgement does not necessarily mean that the student agreed on the content or results, and the opportunity to comment, even in the report, and to discuss should be given. Hopefully you've grasped how training reports should be written. Here we'll present several examples of how to write observations and recommendations and what not to do. Do not write. Write. Do not write. Write. Do not write. Write. Do not write. Write. And write feed forward. We hope that you have found something valuable in this video to take with you. And don't forget to question. Curiosity is key.